Man, I thought that I was gonna film an intro on my bike ride today outside, but that is not happening. It's just too windy, man. But today we're talking about being a self-taught developer, right? Being a self-taught developer is, it's pretty cool. You get to learn at your own pace and you get to learn practically for free compared to like college. But being a self-taught developer definitely comes with its share of struggles, so to speak. And if I could do it all over again, I would do it different. So today we're gonna talk about that. I'm not gonna act all high and mighty like I have no regrets because in all honesty, I do have past failures and in those failures, I've learned a lot. When I think about my past as a programmer, right, there's, there's so many things that I could have done differently. I could have studied more efficiently. I could have not let people take advantage of me, um, but hindsight's 2020, you know? I don't wanna dwell on my past because in all honesty, I'm very happy where my life is today, but I do wanna share my regrets for your benefit. So before we dive into my regrets, I need to bring you up to speed with how I got to where I am today and why I became a self-taught developer for context. After high school, I enrolled into community college because at the time it was really my only option. I studied networking because I wanted to get into tech and I never really saw myself being a programmer at the time. This is mostly because I had a lot of self-doubt and I had a lot of negative assumptions about programmers. I never wanted to be the stereotypical programmer, you know, like drinking Mountain Dew all day, sitting in a dark room, just slinging code and not talking to anybody. I literally thought like programmers never talk to anybody during their workday, which, you know, being in the industry, I realized is so far from the truth. But anyways, through my sister, I ended up finding a local coding club in my community, which I started to attend. From there, I found a bunch of resources to teach myself how to code. And through a string of connections, I kind of landed my first internship slash part-time job. And then my career took off to where it is today. So that's pretty much the 30 second recap of how I became a self-taught developer. If you wanna hear my full story, you can watch my video on that but don't click away yet because if you're considering becoming self-taught, you're gonna really wanna hear these points. So one of the huge benefits of being self-taught is that the responsibility lies on you, right? You're responsible for creating your own curriculum and holding yourself accountable. Teaching yourself how to code isn't the easy route by any means, but by creating your own curriculum, you're kinda held to your own deadline. This means that you can learn programming at your own pace and kind of cut out all the extra baggage that traditional curriculums have. But by creating your own curriculum, there's a lot of gaps that you miss. When teaching yourself how to code, you often focus on the how versus the why. And this is kind of a big problem. For example, when I was trying to solve a problem that I had, I would often Google the answer. I'd come across a Stack Overflow post. I would copy the answer, paste it to my program. It would run and I would kind of just like wipe my hands of it. Because this piece of code that I copy and pasted solved my problem, I thought, okay, you know what, I'm done, on to the next problem, right? This is a big issue, man, you can't do this. When you come across a, a solution, you need to really read through that solution and understand what that code is doing. And understand when you're first teaching yourself how to code, right, that it's not always gonna click. You're not gonna always be able to read through a solution you find on the internet and understand, okay, I know exactly what this is doing, but you need to at least try and eventually it will click at some point. So slow down and read through the code. So that's regret number one, not focusing on the why, more so the how. If you slow down and you focus on the how, Trust me, you will learn so much faster, okay? With that being said, the next regret that kind of piggybacks off the first one is not understanding data structures and algorithms earlier. Because I was so focused on the how versus the why, I never really dived into data structures and algorithms when teaching myself how to code. And when you're teaching yourself how to code, this is something that's often missed. Data structures and algorithms is kind of a, a, a later concept you should learn when you're writing code, but when you're first teaching yourself, you, you often 
don't really come across um, resources that tell you that you really need to sit down and study this stuff. It wasn't until like four years <laughs> into my career that I realized that I had a huge gap in my education and I actually bought this book and taught myself these concepts. Now granted, a lot of programming languages and frameworks have their own data structures and sometimes algorithms built in. And to be quite frank, you can pretty much go your whole career without ever really learning this stuff, but you'll never understand the idea of writing fully optimized and efficient code, which is pretty much uh, what data structures and, and algorithms is all about. Now this is something that you don't need to learn right away. I'd actually consider it an end step in your education. But if you want to get a job at like Fang, you really need to sit down and learn this stuff at some point. I wish I had sooner, to be honest. And my last regret. My last regret is not recognizing my worth. My first internship paid me $12 an hour. When that internship was over, my company offered me a part-time job making $12 an hour. In total, I stayed at that company for one and a half years making $12 an hour, writing code for their biggest clients, right? You get the point. At the time, I honestly didn't care and I didn't really understand that I was being undervalued. And also I, I really didn't know my worth. I was just so grateful that I had the opportunity to actually write code for my job, right? And because of that, I kind of let that company take advantage of me, but it was a trade-off. I got to build my resume, get experience, write code, and that's that's really all that <laughs> mattered to me at the time, to be honest. The only reason I left that company is because a recruiter reached out to me for a full-time mobile developer role. The thing is, this company wanted three to five years of experience and a bachelor's degree, and I was pretty much self-taught, still enrolled in college at the time. Uh, I had one and a half years of internship slash part-time experience, so I thought, okay, there's, there's probably no way I'm actually gonna get this job, right? I'm so underqualified. I thought in my head, there's no way I'm going to get this job. The only reason I went to that interview was for the experience, but I nailed the interview, I nailed the technical questions, and I got the job offer, and it was then I finally realized my worth. So the moral of the story is, don't let people take advantage of you. Now, do what you gotta do to get your feet off the ground. So if that means take a low paying job just to get your feet off the ground, like I did, then do that. But please, please, please recognize that this shit should only be temporary. So those are pretty much my three biggest regrets. To recap, number one, focus on the why over the how. Number two, don't forget about studying data structures and algorithms. And number three, probably the most important, don't let people take advantage of you. My path today is by no means perfect, but you know, I'm happy with how it turned out. And even though I have regrets, I see those regrets as necessary. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.